Hello everyone and welcome to a new crazy data science video. As always, we are going to try and solve issues you never really thought you had using real world data science methods and techniques. And in this video, we are going to look at a very interesting uh, problem. And this one was sent in by Jimmy and it goes, Hey crazy data science, I love puzzles, especially finding Waldo or Wally. Uh, but I'm stuck on a tricky one. Any chance you guys can help me out? Well, for those people who are unfamiliar with finding Waldo or Wally, kind of depending on where in the world you are right now, uh, basically the idea is to find a little guy in a puzzle full of various drawn objects, just like I'm showing you in this image. Now, we are definitely not the only ones who are on a quest to find Wally. Uh, Randy Olson on his blog basically calculated the optimal search path to find Wally when you're looking at one of those puzzles. So basically what he did is he created a guide for you to scroll over the images with your eyes and have the best chances of finding Wally as quickly as possible. Uh, well, this is all very neat. Uh, I'm a lazy guy. I, I don't really want to look through those images myself. Uh, so we are going to do it a little bit differently in this video. What we are going to do is we are going to use OpenCV, which is a face recognition framework, and build our own custom hair cascade classifier to detect Wally inside the puzzles. Now, what a hair cascade classifier is, we're going to dive into that a little bit later, and I'll explain to you what it is and how it works. But basically, we're going to try to use face recognition to pick out Wally inside one of those puzzles. And as you probably know, face recognition is used everywhere. If you have a camera and you point it at someone, uh, at a person, it will draw those little boxes around their faces. That's face recognition at work. So how does a hair cascade classifier work? Well, it's kind of complicated, but basically what it comes down to is that uh, you create a har feature which is a kind of think of it as a, as a box with a darker and a lighter area and that box is being moved across the image and calculations are being made on the lighter versus the darker uh, pixels in the image we are moving across now har features can have all kinds of different shape and sizes uh, but depending on the pixel composition we are moving across the picture we are analyzing it basically learns what object we need to look for. It's a very optimized solution. It is very fast uh, after you've trained your HAR classifier. For face recognition, uh, people already created the custom HAR classifiers uh, on a lot of faces, so those are really accurate. But what we are gonna do, uh, there isn't a HAR classifier yet for, for Wally. So we are gonna write our own or basically train our own using OpenCV, uh, which is then going to be trained on, on an image of Wally. So it will create a HAR uh, feature that is trained by images of Wally. So it should be able, after training, to detect Wally on images. So this might sound a little bit complicated to you, but I've added some links in the description of this video that tell you a bit more about how HAR cascade classifiers work. So if you're interested in knowing how those things work and how you can train them yourself, uh, take a look at the links in the description. All right, so let's get started on the challenge at hand, uh, finding Wally uh, in one of those big puzzles. So the first thing we need to do is train our custom hair classifier. So let's get going, shall we? So what I have here open is a folder on my computer of, of the Where is Wally project. And there are a lot of files and folders in here. So the first ones I want to point out is the OpenCV executables. And these are needed for us to train our HAR Cascade classifier. Um, I'm running Windows and I can tell you if you want to do this yourself, you will have to compile OpenCV manually on your Windows PC with Python bindings. And I already did that, so I'm not gonna repeat those steps. I'm gonna tell you it was a real pain, uh, but I've added an article in the description of this video that should get you started quickly. So the first thing I wanna point out is I got an image here of Wally. 
And what we're going to do is we are going to train our HAR classifier based on this image. So we are going to train it on this single image. Our ultimate goal is to detect Wally on this puzzle. So Wally is here somewhere on this image and we are going to use the, the HAR classifier we train and try to detect it on this image later on. But the first thing we need to do is actually train our HAR cascade classifier and for that we need a lot of images. As I've shown you, I only have one Wally image. Ideally, you want multiple images of Wally um, to train your classifier on so you can detect him on more uh, puzzles in, in different situations or in different poses. For now, we're just going to use one Wally image because the more we have, the longer it will take to train our classifier. What we also need next to our positive image is a lot of negative images. And those negative images are images that do not have Wally on them. And for that, I used a download of a guy who created a repository on GitHub and basically took all uh, different chunks of Wally images and labeled them. Do they have Wally on them or do they have, don't they have Wally on them? So what I did, I downloaded uh, the repository and I grabbed all the images that doesn't have Wally on them. So this is a, a, a huge list of around 1300 images that do not contain Wally. So these are fine for our negative images. Uh, basically, even though it's cool to use the same uh, images uh, as the puzzles where Wally is on, uh, we can use anything we want as a negative images. I could have taken uh, some pictures of my house and as long as they don't contain Wally, uh, it will be, uh, it, it'll be fine. Um, the next thing we are going to do is we need to create a, for our hard classifier a lot of positive samples. And positive samples are basically created by merging a negative image together with our positive Wally image and label it as a positive sample. Uh, we need a lot of positive samples, uh, so the hard classifier training knows it identified Wally correctly. And to do that, we are going to run a command. So in the first command we are going to run uh, is the OpenCV create samples command. And what this basically does is we tell it we have a positive image called Wally. We have a file with all the different locations of our negative images, which is this one. These are the, all the locations of the negative images I've just shown you. And we tell it we want it to create an annotations file. And an annotation file is basically a file that has uh, the, a list of all the images and also some description information about where Wally is located. Uh, we're going to give it some more in, uh, uh, parameters, like some angle information. Uh, I'm not going to dive into too deep in that. Uh, and we're going to give it the number of samples it has to create. So remember what we're doing now is we are creating 1300 positive samples. So we are merging the various negative images together with the positive images of Wally to create a positive uh, uh, sample for the OpenCV training to work with. So I'm going to start this and this is going to take a little while. So fast forward uh, a minute or so, uh, the command is done and we have a folder called annotations that is filled with all these images. And I'm going to show a couple to you. So let's put it on some large icons. And what you will see in these images is that it's basically in negative images with our positive image put somewhere inside the negative image. So as you can see, Wally is everywhere in these pictures. The location and the size is basically calculated by the parameters, but these are our positive samples. So when we train our model, we can say, here you have an image that has Wally in it. Next to all these images, uh, which are around 1300, there is a file called annotations.lst. And if we look at that file, what you'll see is it has the name of the image together with a bit of information. Like here, 
the one indicates there's only one Wally on this image, and these are basically the coordinates of where Wally resides on that image. So now that we have our positive samples figured out, we can go to the next step. In this case, again, I'm going to use the OpenCV create samples command, but I'm going to point it to our annotation file. And I'm going to tell it we have 1300 positive samples. I'm going to give them a, a, a width and a height because we want to make the images a bit smaller because the larger they are, the longer the training will take. And as an output parameter, I'm going to tell the command to create a vector file called positives.vec because the hair uh, classifier training requires a, a vector file. And the vector file is basically uh, the contents of our negative and our or of our positive images, uh, but usable to train uh, a hair cascade classifier using OpenCV. This is really quick. Uh, it's done. And the fun thing is we can open the vector file and look inside of it. And we can do that by using this command which basically opens our positives.vector with a view parameter. And what we're going to see here is, and it's a bit difficult to see, uh, the contents of the vector file. And if you look carefully, you can see Wally is here. He's there again. Uh, but this isn't very readable. And that is because we resize the image a lot uh, just to keep training time shorter. And talking about training, the next step is to actually train our custom hair cascade classifier. And we're going to do that using this command. So we're going to use the OpenCV train cascade command. We tell it where our positive images are, our positives.vector file. We tell it where the negative images are. And we're telling it, okay, we have around 1200 positive images and we have 600 negative images. We're going to tell it how many stages it has to train and it goes through various changes to optimize the classifier and we tell them how big the images are uh, going to be for training. So I'm going to run this command and this is going to take a couple of minutes. All right, so fast forward time a little bit and we are done training our custom HAR cascade classifier in about four minutes and 22 seconds. Keep in mind that this, uh, is a very fast training time. In normal situations, you would have way more positive and negative samples. Like in the thousands of uh, samples, you, you would generally want to get a, a good performing uh, classifier. But since we are only interested in finding Wally in one particular image, uh, for now, this, this is fine. Uh, when this is done, we get a file called cascade.xml inside our classifier folder. And this is the holy grail. This is what we have been training on. This is basically our hard cascade classifier. And we can load the XML file into a scripting language and use it to detect images. And to do that, I wrote a little uh, Python script which will use the cascade classifier we just trained and try and find uh, Wally on the image I've shown you earlier. So what I'm doing is I'm importing CV2. Remember, you have to compile, uh, if you're on Windows, you have to compile OpenCV yourself with Python bindings. Uh, point it to our working directory where I am right now. I'm gonna supply the image file on which we were going to detect Wally. I'm gonna quickly show it to you again. We're going to find Wally somewhere on this image. I'm going to load our cascade file. So this is the classifier we just trained. And I'm going to use some commands to load the image, load the cascade file. And this part is basically where the magic happens. So this is the OpenCV detect multiscale command. And it will get the image as input and try and find Wally on the image using our cascade classifier. And two things that are very important are these parameters, scale factor and min neighbors, uh, because they influence the behavior of the, de the detection. Uh, I have already tuned them for this image, uh, but if you're trying to do this demo yourself on perhaps a different image of Wally, -E, uh, you will need to tune these uh, parameters a lot to get the best results. So with everything ready, let's look at the code and see if it works and if we can find Wally on the image. All right, 
let's fire it up let's see what happens and look at that we actually detected Wally on this image. It drew the little uh, rectangle around it and we get the text Wally detected. So this is a very good result. Keep in mind though, I already tuned the angle and the neighbors parameter a lot to make it work with this image. Uh, if I change them around, you would probably be seeing a couple of more false positives. Uh, there are basically two ways to solve that and the ideal way would be uh, to train our classifier on way more Wally images. So we need a lot more positive samples. We need a lot more negative samples to make the detection far easier. And the alternative is to tune the parameters a bit for it to work. So I already did that. And as you can see, it is working. Now, even though this is very cool, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm kind of a lazy person. Uh, and don't want to take a picture of every where is Wally uh, puzzle book or download the images in an ideal situation I would use the camera on my phone or perhaps on my laptop to detect Wally so can we use our cascade classifier to do that sure we can so I wrote another Python script that basically uh, does the same as the previous one but instead of taking uh, an image file as input it uses my webcam as input so let's see if we can make that work. This is the version where is Wally uh, webcam. This will open up my laptop webcam. And as you can see, it already detected a false positive uh, right here. <laughs> uh, but I got this neat little image of Wally, of the Wally puzzle here that I printed out. And we're gonna see if we can find it if we hold this image in front of the webcam. So we need to zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's see if this is gonna work. We already know a bit where Wally is, so we're gonna aim it. And look at that, he found it. But as you can see, it depends a lot uh, on the angle and the way I hold the file. And we have a lot more false positives. So like I said, this has a lot to do with uh, us setting the angles correctly and right now in our webcam program uh, we are setting the angles manually by holding the document in different directions and in different ways in front of the webcam so to summarize this video uh, we trained our own custom uh, hard cascade classifier based on a positive image of wally and used it to detect wally on an image uh, or even on a printed image through my webcam. So for this challenge, I'm gonna call it busted because I absolutely am convinced that if you spend a lot of, a bit more time tr training a cascade classifier using more positive Wally images, we should be able to create a cascade file that can detect Wally on image, any image. So finally, I wanna thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you're interested in more crazy data science stuff, be sure to visit the crazy data science channel or subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, give it a little thumbs up and share it wherever you want. Um, all of the code that I've shown you will be again uploaded to the crazy data science GitHub repository so you can download it and play for yourself. And if you have a challenge that you, you want data science to solve, but you can't find anyone crazy enough to try it, uh, send us a message either by commenting on this video or sending a message to us on Twitter. Thanks.